two years after signing a landmark deal that kept her at MSNBC but reduced her workload to one hour of live TV each Monday. Rachel Maddow, stepping back from the hustle of a nightly cable news show, is looking a lot less relaxing than it did on paper. She has filled the void left by those four weekly episodes of The Rachel Maddow Show, Must See TV for the Panicked American Progressive, with podcasts, an aggressive Hollywood development slate, her fourth book, prequel, An American Fight Against Fascism. Out October 17th from Crown, and a new outlook on how to best share her deep well of historical and political knowledge with her loyal following. Producing the same kind of material for the same shaped box at the same time every day had me worried that my brain was getting squished into that box, too, says Maddow, who turned 50 in April. I was not thinking in expansive ways because I didn't have expansive deadlines. During an expansive conversation on a sunny September afternoon in the rooftop garden of MSNBC's 30 Rockefeller Plaza headquarters. It's telling that Maddow is working from the office and not the western Massachusetts home she shares with her longtime partner, artist Susan McCullough. She's donning more hats than ever, but she's ready to jump back on the air as news demands. In between GOP chaos and the House of Representatives, Donald Trump's legal woes and a make-or-break presidential election on the horizon, news is as demanding as ever. So are her viewers. Maddow's is regularly the number one program in all of cable news even as she hits 15 years on the air, a feat celebrated with a party the night before we meet. That's 105 in dog years, she clarifies. And I feel every inch of it. More than a year after cutting back your on-air time, how do you feel about the boundaries that you've established? I have not established any boundaries at all. Laughs. This is a grave problem. Clearly, you prepared for this interview by talking to Susan, who honestly and earnestly thought she would get more time with me which has not happened. Having settled into only airing Mondays, what does the rest of your week look like? With the five days a week show, I became a pretty good compartmentalizer. We built a staff cadence where, unless something really crazy happened, we were not calling each other on weekends. I think that's how we were able to avoid burnout for all that time. Now I have an uncompartmentalizable work life, and I haven't figured it out yet. I work seven days a week instead of five, but it doesn't feel like as much of a grind. There's still a little impulse, since we're planning a week in advance, to base it around a big interview. But I've never been inclined to book well in advance. It's not my jam. I don't want to be locked into something that seems like a good idea a week in advance that doesn't feel pressing by the time we get around to the show. Can you believe it? Laughs. The grand jury process is legit secret. It is like the last sacrosanct thing in American civic life. Trying to discern when the grand jury is going to hand down an indictment. It's not exactly tea leaves, but it's close. And all the best tea leaf reading was that it would not happen that day. We had the opportunity to book Hillary Clinton. She'd written this essay in The Atlantic about loneliness. It's an underappreciated thing in the preservation of democracy. The idea that people need to feel like they have a stake in their community to have a stake in their country. We said to her office, Rachel is really interested in this essay. But it has to be okay with you that we cancel if something major happens in the legal environment. Totally fine. I was sure it was not going to happen that day. And then sure enough, obviously, you didn't cancel. We contacted her office and said, if she wants to cancel, we totally get it. I was shocked that they went along with it. And it's not just that she was there. It was that she had something profound to say about it. A lot of people reacted to the optics of the fact that we had her there. Look at the look on Secretary Clinton's face. You can treat it that way, but actually the content of the interview is helpful. She's somebody who's operated at those levels and who competed against him to try to keep him out of that job. I thought it was fascinating. Multiple outlets have described these indictments as Rachel Maddow's Super Bowl. In the news business, there's some gymnastic scoring. You get judged on degree of difficulty. In the multiplicity of jurisdictions, charges, prosecutions, relevant fact patterns, potential witnesses, lawyers, all these different things, the things that you have to learn to ably cover in this part of the Trump era. Up our degree of difficulty. I like the challenge, but this is hard. Ultra, your 2022 podcast about far-right groups plotting to overthrow the U.S. government before World War II, has led to your new book, 